What a beautiful, wonderful company you are, people. And this morning dance was so beautiful. And I just want to share these words by Gabrielle Roth from her book, Connections, because she really inspires each pr practice and each dance. And the words are, Back in the beginning, my intention was simply to help people move, to be freer and more relaxed in their bodies. But then I noticed that the more they moved and the longer and deeper they moved, the more their emotions came alive, animating their movement from a soulful place within where they could access the power of their vulnerability, their tenderness, a place that propelled them beyond their heads, beyond their egos, beyond what the external world was telling them to do and be. And I feel what she meant by this is especially at this time of the year around Christmas going into the new year, you know, solstice, Christmas, new year, there are, I have witnessed there are a lot of people who are exhausting themselves by this doing and business and shopping and overdoing. And, and that world, that advertisement enhanced consumer world is literally exhausting us of our vital life force and and energy and taking us out of, of, of our center. So what I feel and what I am discovering in the practice is to listen, listen to the world, the rhythm of the nature, that stillness this winter. What is that telling you to do? And as I said in the class this morning, to be really mindful of your input and the output in the next few weeks on every level, physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, where are you giving and over giving and just be mindful of the center, whatever you are doing, come back to that flow, check your energy, check how you are and then feel what I'm extending, is it rooted and grounded in my capacity or am I overdoing, overstretching, overgiving, overspending? It is a really important thing to take into these winter months. And then this, you know, these words that I didn't manage to share in the class because there's a whole page and it goes like this. Ancient sorrow and angers and fears and joys still inform our individual history. The history of a human psyche stretches as far back as the first movements when creatures of the earth found they could use their bodies to express the mysterious sensations that come from within them. What we urgently need is ritualized way to return our power to the dance and for it to take us back to us as it once did, telling us things we don't yet know about ourselves and each other. Over the years, I have witnessed thousands of dancers struggling with the invisible forces of do and don't do, and finally breaking through to their mysterious inner world, overcoming obstacles that would inhibit their movements with partial truth and misunderstanding. In their movements, they discover how their world have been demystified, sorted, boxed and bound. No wonder a dancer could stand lost in the middle of a room of a raging beats and be unable to make a definite move. Our internal history was short-circuited 
thousands of years ago so that few of us remember the movements that once carried us deep down inside ourselves into the darkness to Big Mama Beat, where we become the truth. We have been turning to our authorities for our answers, and now we are discovering that they too have forgotten the truth. History, the consciousness of all life on the planet, waits patiently in each living cell, wondering when we will open up to the infinite wisdom we each embody. So I feel that infinite wisdom which we embody is about coming back into the body so that we can remember the wisdom and the needs of our bodies. And what was so fascinating to me, and this is what I said in the class this morning, since teaching that close group, the discipline of nourishment, and in the first module, we were emphasizing the ability to listen to our needs, to scan ourselves and truly feel what our need is, and then build our life, you know, from that place. And what was so fascinating for me that I have asked, as I said, between 30 and 40 something, mainly women and some men, if they have had in their life a person who told them the importance of trusting their bodies, of nourishing themselves, of taking care of their bodies, of developing that receptive part to really trust how you feel, how your body is. And including myself, none of these people have had that in their life. If you really think about it, that is, that is ridiculous. We are all born with bodies, you know, that's how we come into life. And yet that body is quite dismissed. Yet the body holds all the emotional and the mental states and experiences of our lives i find it i find it quite incredible how many of us have and still are to a degree going through life you know shoving down our needs suppressing overriding our needs it's unbelievable. No wonder we have so much problem with mental health. Anyway, I am now reporting from my sort of, it's called cashmere and uh, silk love. I think I am now dedicating this next, it's not I'm going to re rewrite the chapter of my life. I think I'm rewriting the book. It should be some sort of beautiful, feminine, nourishing time for me. Because I've literally, I think, looking at the last 13 years, I have not had ability to stop and pause and nourish myself. I did it in a kind of survival mode, but not the thriving mode. So I feel what is so important at this time of the year that you scan your beautiful body and yourself and just discern what are you doing? Where are you going? Where would it be wise to say no? And where would it be vital to say yes? What nourishes you? What depletes you at this time of the year? Because what I have learned, and I've shared that in the class today, that if, as I fully look at my life for the last 53 years, I feel all of the relationships and things that I have done in my life that went well, that are still great and thriving and good in my life, have come because I started and engaged these relationships for, from a very deep, respectful place of myself, when I, where I truly trusted myself, where I truly honored, you know, if I like or it's not about like, dislike, but if I feel safe with this person, if this person feels safe, you know, for me. And he ha 
if I have trusted my deeper instinct, some of these incredible people are still in my life. And then I look at, look at the, I don't know, what is the, 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 it's like, you know, the relationships, the friendships, that connections that kind of, you know, finished in the graveyard of life and um, sort of self-destructed themselves. I feel these relationships I have engaged and started because, and I was going against my deeper instincts, ignoring my needs and not communicating what I really love and what I need. And usually that overgiving happens because we don't, we're not connected to the center and we don't listen to our needs. I think it's very easy to do this when you are in a survival mode, when you are stressed, when you don't have time to pause and descend. So I feel for the last 53 years, you know, whatever has happened, has happened, I can't change it. But I feel between now and I feel, you know, if I live till I'm 80 something, 80 is like a nice number. But between now and my death, I feel so committed to respecting my truth, to respecting my needs, to take time and responsibility to center myself, to rest, and then conduct my life from this place. So I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you who has come to my classes, to these beautiful Gabriel Roth's maps that give us so much every time we come to the dance. And I feel where I am growing and healing and going that I will give the best of myself to you. My loving advice to you uh, is that you take care of yourself, that you train yourself to rest, that you train yourself to, to slow down. And, and once you nourish that cup, once you nourish your, your center, your essence, whatever comes through you will be a beautiful loving gift towards yourself and the other. So much love to you and I'm looking forward to the solstice dance and the new year dance and exactly what happened in the class today, following that process, giving a little bit more time to our unfolding is what I will be focusing my teaching, my attention and my love in the classes. And this afternoon, I am going to literally spoil myself to death with the beautiful nourishing food and entering this phase of my life, which is about rest and pleasure and nourishment and enjoying this magnificent company of just being myself and yeah that feels like a beautiful beautiful promise and I'm committing to it 100% I hope you do too